Hi, everybody. My name is Lisa Askelis Inventress. My business is Inventing A to Z. At Inventing A to Z, I work with clients to take their products from concept to fruition, from a napkin idea all the way to the marketplace and everything in between the right way. If you want to contact me, email me, lisa at inventingatoz.com. My website, inventingatoz.com. My name is Lisa Ask Lee's Inventress, CEO and founder of Inventing A to Z. But today you're on my podcast. So welcome to the Inventress podcast. Very, very excited today because I have on one of my very, very dear friends uh, many, many years. I'm thinking, I don't even know how, it's well over 15, 20, maybe even 30 years at this point. I'm so proud of her, so proud to introduce uh, Allison Williams. You may know Allison from her greatest hits such as Just Call My Name and um, uh, Sleep Talk and just so many other hit albums. She's been on Columbia Records, Def Jam, you name it, she's been there. First R&B singer under Russell Simmons. Welcome my dear friend, Allison Williams. I'm so beyond excited today because I have a longtime friend. She's a singer, she's an actress. She's, she's very funny too, I gotta tell you. I won't put comedian in there, but she, she's, she is a comedian. She's, in fact, she's done some stand-up. She's been singing for many, many years. Jazz, R&B, you name it, she's done it. She's been on record labels such as Columbia, um, um, Def Jam, name it, she's been there, and she's got her own record label. Welcome, my friend, the incomparable, Allison Williams. Hi, Lisa. How are you, baby? Super excited to see you today, honey. You look marvelous. Well, thank you. And you look marvelous, too. Thank you. As you always do. As you always do. So how are you? I'm living in a pandemic. Yes, yes, we are. Yeah, I'm living through a pandemic, which is, to me, likening someone being able to say, I lived through slavery, or I lived through the Great Depression, or I lived through the great stock market, you know, plummel of whatever year that was it's yeah. really weird i lived through a famine it's like <clears throat> you know it's 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 one of those major things that happens once and hopefully once in a lifetime that you get to say if you've lived on the planet long enough that you've been through it and hopefully we get to say we lived through it and it's over it's gone that's in the past we yeah. want to put it in the past but in the meantime yeah i'm thankful to um in the midst of a pandemic have having been, when I look back over 2020 and into 21, the things that I've been able to accomplish is nothing short of a miracle. Uh, starting first of all, with being able to stay in good health yes. and just be present right this very moment um, because we have, um, we've all suffered a loss as a nation, as a planet uh, and personally in our families and, and, and uh, it's a lot, it's a lot. Yeah, every one of us, it's, it's touched all of us, un unfortunately. And um, the good thing is collectively, we all know it and we're together. It's not one person can say, well, it didn't happen to me. We have each right. other. There's no one that can say this hasn't touched them in some yeah. way. Exactly, we, but we have each other to lean on, thank God. you know. And even this, what we're doing today, this Zoom thing, this wouldn't yeah. have happened. You know, you know I, I don't think I would want to learn it. But now we're, we're thrown into, the, we're, we're thrust into learning all of these new technologies. Well, now from what I know, and, 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 and you on the creative end um, may, may have not been aware, just like many um, uh, creatives might not have known on certain levels, the corporate world has been using Zoom for a long time, you know, for meetings and, and, and so on and so forth. Hold on, adjustment. <laughs> my, my shirt was trying to choke me to death. Um, yeah, Sorry about that, people. Uh, okay. But um, you know, we 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 have learned this new technology between Zoom and a yard stream and this and that and that and everything. What I call it in the box, 
Yeah. I'm in, I'm working in the box. They keep saying, think outside of the box. Now I find myself right in the box. And that's how we have to make it happen. And it's going to be this way for some time for all we know. It is. It is. Uh, and if nothing else, this will be a part of what we call our new normal yeah. going forward. And we this adjust. is something. Yeah. We have to adjust. We have no choice, right? Exactly. And I think it's forced us to learn different things and to push our boundaries and to take us out of our comfort zone. So those are all positive things that's that right. have come out of um, this, this, uh, this, these tumultuous times that we're living through. So Allison, I want you to talk about yourself because I mean, I could talk about you forever. For those listeners and now visual folks coming in because we're now we're doing this via video. Let's talk about Allison Williams and, and, and share your background. And I want to know what you're doing today. So let's talk about a little bit about your background first and then move forward with, with where you are today, what's happening. Okay, well, let's see. I'm a little black girl from Harlem, New York City, Uptown, USA, um, and very happy to claim Harlem as my home. Um, I had a really wonderful um, upbringing in that sense of what we know Harlem to be, which is a place that is steeped and rooted in legacy and history. So I got a chance to experience not just growing up there, but knowing the culture and knowing the history, which made me appreciate it. My dad was a jazz trumpet player and a band leader. He had a 21 piece swing band called the Bobby Booker Big Band. My mother had a career in uh, singing, dancing, acting in the arts, but she gave that up to raise her two daughters. Uh, Shirley Williams is her name. And um, she became a nurse. And so my mom, um, you know, supported and sent us to school by uh, uh, being a nurse. And uh, they both supported me in my passion for the arts, which I think, you know, was was always there. I, I, I knew that from a very young age, I loved singing and dancing and, and acting and all those things because I came home to that kind of, when they brought me home from the hospital, there was music playing, you know what I mean? Uh, but in um, in my mind, I thought I wanted to be an Olympic gymnast but I kept growing taller. So I knew that that was not gonna happen. And I was mad at God because he kept making me tall when my mother was a very little lady. And I thought, you know, of course I could be a gymnast. Then I said, well, maybe maybe I'll be a figure skater. And then they gave me the lesson. I learned how to figure skate. And there was a, an ice skating rig, uh, not just up the block from where I lived in Harlem, right in Central Park. Um, but then that became, you know, when you're going to a Catholic school and you have piano lessons and dance lessons and all that, they were just doing so much for me. So I was like, I'm not gonna pursue this this way. So let me, you know, not be that, you know, I wanna do everything and then quit or anything like that. But I realized I wanted to fly. That was my thing. I wanted to fly, fly. Um, fly. I, I just, I wanted that feeling of freedom, like an eagle, like to fly. Um, I felt that there were certain things in, in my element of Harlem at that point in time in, in, in the seventies, you know, by the time I was a kid, I was born in the sixties. I, I, I wanted to escape from Harlem. I wanted to escape from the hood, from the ghetto and, and if I could fly. So all of these things, uh, gymnastics and, and, and figure skating and, and it actually came down to, to dance. So I started out with uh, Arthur Mitchell in the basement of the Church of the Masters where he started and um, began to, um, and, and, and a lot of other local uh, dance institutions as well, but um, I eventually came back to that when they did a brick and mortar school, which became the Dance Aid of Harlem and became a, uh, a, a scholarship student there and excelled through the junior company. And so there was, I found my wings, but I knew I, I knew I could sing. You started dancing though, right? Didn't, didn't you do the dance? I believe that's I did the dance. I did the dance, did the dance for a long, long time. That was my career. Um, I actually, as a child, be, belong to dance companies uh, such as uh, Dance in Harlem and the Marie, Marie, Marie Brooks Children's Dance Company, where we actually were paid, uh, you know, to perform. So that was my performance platform. Um, and that is what I think gave me the confidence to sing because I knew that my voice was there, but I didn't sound like what I thought I was supposed to sound like. Because when you're a kid, you think you're supposed to sound like your favorite singer. You know, you're supposed to sound like- you, Your parents, right? Your, your for me, no, uh, well, that and as well as the people you hear on the radio, right. you know what I mean? You want to be cool, you want to be hip, you want to be able to riff, you want to be able to soar. But 
I was brought up on jazz music, big band jazz music. So f to a kid dealing with other kids, right? That's grown people. Who, that's lame. You know, what do we know about a, a Ella Fitzgerald and Sarah Vaughan? It's like, could you please put on the jazz and five? You know what I'm saying? It's what like you just, what you just, you don't know. You don't know. So no, it made me hide. Mm -hmm. It made me hide my singing because I knew legitimate jazz music. And, and everybody else was coming up with the, you know, with the R&B and the soul. And I loved it and I knew it, but I couldn't sound like it. You know, I was, I was singing in my bedroom to Barbara Streisand. I was rehearsing the entire Funny Girl soundtrack. Dionne Warwick, uh, like I said, we had Henry Mancini playing in the house. We had uh, uh, um, um, Earl, Earl, Earl Father Hines. We had Duke Ellington, we had all that. And uh, Claude Terry was coming over and Dizzy Gillespie and they were all friends. And, you know, that was that was the circle. But when you get right. to your peers, mm -hmm. you are then the geek. Yes. You are the nerd. If you remember riding in the car, the mm -hmm. big Cadillac, where you could fit like eight kids in the back yeah. and the steering wheel was this big. <laughs> and when you when that, when your parents pulled over and jumped out to go to the store, you turned the channel on the radio immediately. <laughs> because they were swinging and playing other kinds of music. You wanted to hear something. But for me, it wasn't like that. That was my music. I was fine. Mm -hmm. But you can't take that around your friends because then you become, oh, you're so corny. Yeah, oh, so, you know, they, they gave you that. But I am so happy for um, the eclectic mix that was, you know, given to me uh, from R&B to jazz to gospel to, you know, uh, pop. And, and, and all kinds of music. So I, I, I digress. Um, that was my childhood. Mm -hmm. And then it, when I finally decided to let my voice be heard, um, it opened up another door because then I began to sing with my father's big band and I still had the dance and I was still thriving through that. And now the acting came through and I was doing plays and so on and so forth and, and experiencing Broadway for the first time as, a, as, a, as an audience member. And it was like, whoa, and you know, so that was, that was, that was the teenage years. And by the time I was 16, uh, they trusted me enough to be able to be a part of a, a, a rhythm and blues band. Uh, and, and I was able to go and do little gigs and, and, and make my own money and start becoming a singer and start discovering, uh, as my mother used to say, Allison, you're not doing anything wrong, but I just want to tell you, you have to find your own voice. Cause she would catch me, you know, pick a head in the door and I'd be singing in the mirror, in the brush. And she'd be saying, what you doing? And I'd hide the brush and go, nothing. <laughs> and then she'd leave and then she'd come back. She says, listen, you're not doing anything wrong, but you have to find your own voice. We already have a Shaka Khan. We already have a Gladys Knight. You've got to, you got to. And I didn't know what that meant because they didn't sound broken. So why not want to sound like them? And I also remember when we were coming up, we had variety shows. So what I want to point out is how you were very encouraged by your parents. Oh, yeah. You know, in, in many cases, you have parents who are actors and singers, et cetera. And they discourage their children from doing this. Because they want you, well, this was when my discourage came, the, the, the discouragement came. By the time I got to be, I guess, um, I was in my twenties by this time. They never discouraged me from doing the, the music or the dance, they, they, they continued with that. But, um, you know, they, like I said, they, they wanted me to find my own voice and I had to figure that out. Um, I, I learned to sing through impersonation and for a very long time I could impersonate anyone. And I, cause I thought that was a, a, a stream of income. I thought that I could be on the Ed Sullivan show and be an impersonator. Cause I had seen that. We right. had those kinds of shows and people did that for a living. So I said, if they don't like the way I sing, I can sing like anybody. But the discouragement came when I, when I was in high school and they would tell me, well, you need to take Spanish as opposed to French because Spanish is the next thing. And if you have to go get a job in an office, you need to be able to be bilingual and speak Spanish. Mind you, the first time I went out of the country, I went to France. And I, you know, I just want, that's the, that's, that's the language I wanted to learn. I learned Spanish because I was told to learn, but, and because they had that thing in their mind that you gotta have something to fall back on. They didn't tell me you're gonna have to go get a job, but in case you do, this is what you, and so it manifests itself in me being frustrated because I landed in France and I could have been fluent because I would have learned French because I wanted to. I right. learned some Spanish because I was told to. I speak right. enough and understand enough that to get through, but it didn't become a, a second language. The French would have become a second language because it was something I desired to do. Right. As a Tory and I'm very stubborn, if you tell me don't go to the right, I'm going directly to the right. <laughs> tell me go to the left, I'm going to the right again. It's, it, I'm, I'm just, 
They call it stubborn. I call it persistent. Persistence and independence, honey. You do oh, all you, of that. And you found that Allison Williams voice. You found that voice. I, I think I found it. I think I've just found it in the last maybe 10 years. Um, but I realized that it is a, cul a culmination of many different voices and sounds uh, and isms that were poured into me and that nurtured me. Uh, being mentored by people like Nancy Wilson mm -hmm. and Shaka Khan and Valerie Simpson and having those strong women in my life, not only just to give me advice in the world, but to talk to the throat and yeah. speak to that. It, you know what I'm saying? You start to, you know, to, to really let that uh, marinate. And then you, as you get older and as you mature with anything, um, your voice changes. It takes on different nuances. It mellows in certain places. It, it, it rises and falls in other ways. So I, I finally, I guess, I think I found my voice because people tell me I, that they recognize it when they hear it. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I say some people sound like you. Some people How about that? Who'd have thought that I'd get to a place where somebody would sound like me or want to sound like me? That's right. Who doesn't want to sound like you, Allison? Yeah. You know, well, I don't know. I'm sure there's somebody out there who's just I not happy. You. But, you know how much but it's them. okay. They should want to sound like themselves. I, uh, but you started there too. You wanted to sound like somebody else. I wanted to sound like somebody else, exactly. If you listen yeah. to the singers that are current today, they all have certain things that are common to the way that they sing. And it's because they've listened to someone. They've listened to a Beyonce or they've listened to somebody and they've got this thing that they do where they sing it. When they say you, they don't just say you, they say you. All the ooh, the ooh, the ooh, baby, ooh. I don't know what it is that they're doing, but they're doing it. Yes. It's all very ooh. <laughs> ooh. That's what I hear when I hear the saints today. That's great. And you, I'm sure you listen to every voice. You know, I listen. try to listen because it's my job yes. to know who's out here. And I learned that because um, Nancy Wilson, as you know, uh, or may not know to your audience, she was signed to the Columbia label, uh, the, the which turned into Sony labels. She was on Columbia Jazz. And um, when I met her and she took me under wing, you know, the first time I met her, I said, hi, Miss Wilson, I, 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 you probably don't know who I am. And she stopped her and says, of course I know who you are. First of all, you're signed to the same label, but it's my job to know who you are. Isn't that, I love and it. At that point, I was like, be, because, because she had to stay current. Uh -huh. Do you understand? She had to know who was the next one coming up. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And, um, and then, and then she put that support behind. So, you know, um, as I, as I, as I came through, like I said, my teen years, and then I got into my twenties and I began to travel and sing background with different ones and go on the road and, and have my own record uh, deals with uh, capital of, with a group called high fashion. And we did that for two years. And then I was on profile for about a year while Russell was putting Def Jam together. And then Def Jam, I was signed to Def Jam in 1986. Folks, for those of you who don't know who she's talking oh, about. Oh yes, the, the Russell Simmons. <laughs> Yogi to the world. <laughs> exactly. So Allison, I want to ask you, how did it feel? I, I want to know how it felt when you cut your first album, you had your first. What, what did that feel like? Do you remember? Do you remember the feeling? I remember the exact feeling, but it started long before my first record. My first, my first recording that I can remember, there was a group called the Five Stair Steps. And they were the Burke family. And I had the, 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 the blessing of meeting uh, 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 one of the Burke brothers. Um, and he took me under wing. And uh, he was doing an independent project. Now, mind you, this is uh, early 70s, uh, early 80s. Uh, I mean, late 70s, early 80s. And it was called The Invisible Man's Band. And the single was called All Night Thing. Mm -hmm. People might remember, um, it's going to be a all night thing. Yeah. I bet it's a all night thing. Yeah. It's a all night thing. It's an all night thing. And it was a dance club hit. That was my first background vocal that I released into the world. So to hear myself do those vocals, then I became. Um, uh, uh, a background vocalist, um, a hook girl, as they would call it, to Curtis Blow, uh, which meant that all of the stuff that Curtis was producing at that time, he was the king of rap, still is, uh, and, and he was, um, you know, uh, producing many other artists as well. 
and my phone is buzzing. I'm just going to send her a message. And uh, and um, so, you know, he had me on things like, uh, they're playing basketball and songs like, uh, if I rule the world, oh, mother. all of those rap songs were me. Uh, Fat Boys, AJ Scratch, a whole lot of, all of the rap music that laid the foundation for what we know as hip hop, I was the hook girl for. And, uh, and that's history that a lot of people don't know. Um, it led me also to then doing things for many um, uh, 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 mainstream artists like Melba Moore and Evelyn Champagne King and Bobby Brown and Curtis Hairston and so on and so forth. But uh, when, I, when, they, when they hired me for this high fashion thing in 1981, 82, and I told Russell, I said, this is Capitol Records. I know you're putting the label together, but you know, I need to go. It's like, it's, this, is, this is the house that Nat King Cole built and, he's, and, and Natalie Cole and, and all those wonderful people. I gotta go to Capitol. And he was like, if you gotta go, go. We, we're gonna continue to build the label and figure, you know, I'm gonna make this late. I gotta make this, this the most dopest, deafest underground cult label for cult, uh, you know, underground artists. And that's what he would say every day, 25 times a day. Yeah. So one of the writers uh, that was uh, in, involved in the producers was Kashif. Uh -huh. And Kashif had got, teamed up with uh, Fonzie Thornton, who is uh, Luther's uh, right hand man. And um, so the day I got the word that I would be hired for high fashion, he said, well, you, you made it. You're going to be a part of the group. You and Melissa Morgan and Eric McClinton. How about this? Uh, later this evening, I'm doing a session with Melba Moore. Would you like to come? Uh, you and Lilo, come on and sing background. So I looked at him and I said, oh, that would be wonderful. Melba Moore. Now, mind you, I've seen Melba Moore in Pearly. I've seen Melba Moore in Timbuktu. She's got records out on the radio. She's been on TV standing next to my man crush, uh, uh, Clifton Davis. I mean, she's a big star to me. Yes. I mean, Melba Moore is the bomb diggity. And he said, can I come sing background? So I looked him in the face and said, I'd love to do that. It'd be wonderful. And then I left and went into the bathroom and climbed up the wall. I'm, I'm sure pigeons just flew. It was like, ah! <laughs> you're asking me to come sing background for Melba Moore. That was my big, like when I felt like I had arrived. And I had sung all those songs that I told you about. Mm -hmm. And it was cool. Yes, yeah, yeah. But, that but was that, that was it. pushed me to another thing because now I'm singing with singers. Yes. Really? I had I had laid a foundation for rappers to know that singers needed to be on their records, not their girlfriends and not the girls on the block. They said, yeah. I'm gonna make you a star, come sing on my record. And they they, you know, it would be just a, a train wreck. But I, I knew that business part of it. But when that happened, I knew I was on my way. You know, when I first, uh, I had a classmates that called me because they had day jobs. They called me early in the morning and say, turn on the radio, turn on the radio, they're playing Feeling Lucky lately. You know, and I, and that's, you know, that's when I, you know, you hear yourself on the radio and you just go, wow, I'm really doing. What about your community? You know, I, I'm thinking, I know how, how proud I am of you, Allison, in, in the 15 years or so or more that I've known you, but for your parents, for your neighbors, for your community, they must have wanted to really just hang on to you and say, this is our, this is our girl who, who brought us in now. What did that feel like for your community? Well, I had, I had, because now mind you, this, by this time I'm out of high school and what have you, but um, I'm, in, I'm in my twenties or whatever the case may be. So my family obviously was elated and my dad, the musical family, the extended family, the you know the artists of that that were part of that community were obvious. They were like, well, we always knew she could do this because we were grooming her for this the whole time. But they were happy to see it happen. It wasn't like I had a thing where my dad was a musician, so he called somebody and gave me a deal. It didn't happen like that. Right. So I really got this by hard work and pushing my nose in where I needed to push my nose in and 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 asking questions and 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 being hungry and 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 put and, and you know going for it. Um, but and now when you think about neighbors and stuff, there were a few neighbors and what have you, but you have to remember, I didn't have a community development because I stayed gone. Right. I didn't hang out in front of the building with the other kids. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't hang around. I had my school friends, mm -hmm. so they were all happy because by now we're all old enough to the ones that stayed in contact. We go to the club together and we go here, we go there, you know, we do things. So they're excited. But in terms of right there where I might have been living at the time, they might have known, but known from a from a distance right. because I didn't have a chance to really, you know, make a big like my whole neighborhood didn't know. And maybe right. they did, but 
I didn't know the whole neighborhood because I stayed gone. Yeah. And when you stay gone, you'll find that there's what they what we now call haters. Mm -hmm. of course. So you find that people, once again, they're still wrapped up in the little tiny mindset. Oh, you think you're this, you think you're that. So they're jealous. And that'll so, always that'll, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, those things will never change. But you right. gotta keep on doing so it. but but the people who the people who I did have connection with. Like I said, my, my school, the friends that I still con I connected with friends of mine from first grade. We have a crew that, that, that you know, we're like a, we're like, almost like a off the books LLC. You know what I'm saying? We come, we come together, we travel together, we do those kinds of things. So they were always behind me. And like I said, when you know somebody since you're seven. Yes. You know what I'm saying? To, to, and, and have stayed in real touch. You know what I'm saying? We knew each other's parents. We knew each other's husbands and wives and the kids and so on and so forth. So they're all really excited. And then on the same time, it's like they've known me so long. A lot of times they just keep they they keep me grounded because they treat me real regular. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're excited for me and about me. But they can you please them. take can you please take this bag of garbage out? Can you please <laughs> are you gonna do the dishes? Yes. Um listen, I need you to run the vacuum cleaner before everybody gets here. It's it's not, you know, we it's no it's no stardom. And that's awesome. That's a beautiful thing. And and I yeah. that's how actually I met you. I'm saying 15 years. You know, it's much longer than that. It's gotta be longer than that. You know how I know it's longer because I can't remember. The side court, because this when I think the side court, my house in the side court. We came over, we had some food, and then we went to go do some, you recorded uh, one of the lullabies and the whole Heal the World thing that I wrote as, a yeah. dancer, as an amateur, and I wanted to give it to a professional. And Oleana introduced us. Yes. And, 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 and she came into my life as a result of Dance Theater of Harlem. Yeah. And then we, and then we, re and, and, and Marie Brooks, and then we reconnected uh -huh. through Def Jam. Through so the circle, the circle is always running. It's an endless circle of connection. The endless circle. People who still stay in it. And, you know, the unfortunate thing that, that we heard recently about John and, you know, from um, Houdini, uh, that connection. Yeah. So sad. Ecstasy, yeah. Ecstasy, yep. It's, uh, it's sad. It's sad. And, and when you know a lot of people, you're going to hear things like that. And I, and I try to explain people uh, that to people. I said, you know, I know that I'm going to see things on social media because that is the way of the world. But if you know me and you know that someone has passed on and you know they're in the industry, try to call me as opposed to text me. Because yeah. when you text me, it throws me into a different place. It puts yeah. me in, in a shock mode. And I've, you know, I've, it's just not good. You know, but I'm, you know, people are just trying to let you know. Um, every, for the last few weeks, we've lost, we lost Hank Aaron. I did not know him personally, but uh, with the foundation, I've, I've, I've been attached. Um, uh, Cicely Tyson, who was a, 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 like a mentor to me. You know, I knew this woman. I had many, I have many wonderful Cicely Tyson stories that I hold very dear to my heart, real personal moments um, with her and Dr. Maya Angelou um, together and separately. Um, Mary Wilson, you know, we've lost people. These are people that I know and people I have relationships with. So when I, you know, if, I, I know I'll see it on social media and I, and I can't fault that. But when someone texts me and says, Mary Wilson died, no. it just, it's like, mm. but people yep. forget that this is somebody I knew. A personal relationship. And right, and I, and I wish that we would continue to keep, uh, hold people in reverence the way that we, you know, that we, that we used to, and we call and say, hey, how you doing? Good, what you doing? Okay, listen, I got something I got to tell you. I don't have good news, or, you know, I hope you're sitting down or something like that. Just prep me, please. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, I can celebrate Miss Tyson's life. I can celebrate Mary's life. I can celebrate ecstasy's life. I, I knew those gentlemen when they just were three young men with a dream. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and we were all sitting in the office looking at each other going, I wonder what Ty Russell's coming back so we can play our, our demo for him. You know, was, that's how we would, you know, we would do. It's, it's And you're regular people, Allison. And this is what I, I want the listeners to know. You're, I mean, I, Drew grew up on my block, Grandmaster D, you know. Little wow. Drew, little mm -hmm. Drew. Drew. I mean, I still know him as little, little, my little Drew. Wow. Um, but I, he grew into this person, into having this, being a part of this incredible group. 
Houdini, who knew you with your friends and all of these, and your regular people we grew up with. And here you became this incredible star. My point is when you stay determined and you have a desire to do the things that you, you choose to do. I mean, you're not only an actress and a singer, all the things I talked about before, you're also an inventor and we'll get to that. But when you have a desire to do something, you can do it with the support. You have a great support system. Obviously your parents encouraged you and um, other people around you also, and then you have your haters. But despite all of the haters, you still did what you needed to do to get where you are today. Yeah, and I, and and for me, uh, Lisa, I'm 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 always proud to say that I'm always growing. I feel like I'm always growing, and I and I feel like um there's so much more. Um, everybody in this industry, and I, and I know you hear people say all the time, you know, I don't do it for the award as you hold your Grammy. I don't do it for the awards. I don't do it for the accolades. Well, then what do you do it for? <laughs> I mean, and, and, and I'm not saying I don't do that. That's the main thing. Sure. But you have to understand when you are, when accolades of certain levels are bestowed upon you, and when you are granted uh, these trophies, they change your platform. They give you a higher and stronger platform on which to stand on and on which to affect change. That's why every time they get ready to want to, 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 want to put a message through, uh, was that? backwards English, yes. Every time they want to get a message through, they call Alicia Keys, they call John Legend, they call they call people with high level platforms. And you get those platforms through the accolades and the awards when, when they tell you, here's a gold medal for you running, the, being the fastest person on the planet. What are you saying? Don't say, I don't do it for the, I don't do it for, to me, that's just so phony. You yeah. do do it to run the race and to be considered the top in your class. To, to, to exude excellence. And that excellence means the phone rings from a different group of people that want to pull you in and do things on a higher and bigger level. Right. And to make money on a different level so that you can live a certain lifestyle and be able to then pay it forward and pay it back. And you by said- By the things that you do. So, so for me, I know that I have a lot further to go. I know that I've run a good race and I'm still running in the race, but there's a lot of things I haven't experienced yet and have yet to, um, I have yet to, I think, um, have the brightest light shown upon me. Certainly I have light and I'm so glad for the light that I have. If it was over tomorrow, I did more than most and I'm, and I'm, and I'm good. But there's so much more that I want. You know, They went to the Super Bowl the other day. That's the highest level that football can go to. I wanna go to the Grammy. Yeah. I want to go to, uh, you know, I want to, uh, that's my Super Bowl. Well, and, and I know when recognized in that, even if I decided I didn't want to do anything else, or even if nothing else came my way, you always live with that. You live with Grammy award winner, blah, 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 Grammy nominated, blah, 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 blah. I got to get that because I'm, a, that's what I do. And you will. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I believe I will. This oh. is going to take, you know, it's going to take time. Um, Tina Turner came into it. Uh, uh, late. Uh, there are a lot of people who, you know, who came in it to came into it, and it didn't happen when they were, you know, uh, at, at a certain uh, age chronologically in their life. I'm not worried about it. I just hope to keep hope to keep waking up every morning with all the limbs moving around, and only God can do that. So if He's in charge of that part, then I let Him handle all the rest too. You know what? You walk around with a gift every single day. It, it, every day, well, every day, and the gift that that is. Music is the medicine. Music is the balm. Yep. Music is the 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 the, uh, the temperature taker and the barometer that tells you exactly what's going on at any period in time through all the eras and and through right now even you know you look at the music and it'll tell you what's going on and I have been given that along with a lot of other people but I've been given that gift that fire I've got to keep that flame from blowing out and that's what I do if I open my mouth in any room whether it's Five people, 500 people, 5,000 or 50,000. I have the ability to bring everybody to one place, whether they're young or old or black or white or gay or straight or fat or thin or short or tall. I can bring everybody. Music does that. It does. And that's what I get to do. And you, you live with it. So I say all the time, you know, Phil's a musician and, and I, you know how much I admire. Phil, Phil. But I went musicians in particular, art, you know, people who draw, but for me in particular, musicians, I love music. I love the art and, and, and the art form. I, anybody who is a singer and has a voice as, as great as yours or, or can play an instrument, you're never alone. 
you're never alone. You're never by yourself. We always have God first and foremost, but you are never alone with the gift that you've been given. You can sing your way through anything. Mm -hmm. Happiness. You can bring yourself joy with your own voice that God has given you. To me, that is, there's not nothing better than the gift that God has given you, that you're able to there's use. There's nothing, there's nothing. And, and it'll be different for each individual. It'll be, some people will make them happy and smile and want to party. Some people will make them cry. Some people will be tears of joy or tears of reminiscence. Do you know what I'm saying? Or tears of that thing that wells up in you. Mm -hmm. You hit every so, you can hit every emotion. And you know what's the funny thing is? You say, you know, creatives, whether you act or whether you sing or whether you dance or play an instrument uh, or whether you're an artist and you draw. All I ever wanted to do was be able to draw. <laughs> is that I, right? can sing, I can sing pretty good, but I can't draw to save my life, boy. Now, nope. do you? I give, I give stick figures a run for their money. Yeah, we won't talk about how I, I draw prototypes. And I don't think you've ever asked me to draw one. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> It's a wonder I do what I do, right? But uh, no, it's, it's such an amazing thing to have all of your gifts and all of your talents. And I find that um, most artists, actors, performers, I mean, you know that Mary Wilson was one of my clients also, may she rest in peace. Mm. She was extremely creative. She was an innovator. She, was, she, invent, she thought she invented the vacuum cleaner as a matter of fact. So, I mean, so many musicians and artists have so many different talents that many people don't know about. It, mm -hmm. You're an inventor. I've seen your inventor. In fact, you, I think, were you wearing one? Yes, I think you are. Yes, indeed. I didn't invent it, but I intend to do a whole bunch of stuff with it. Yeah. But you know, we, we and we've talked. You know, and that 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 is another thing. Um, all, all but for great support. Sometimes all it takes is um, to get to that next level where you can invest. And for, I mean, for, for all the inventors and all the performers and writers, composers and musicians who, um, who are out there that have a great ideas, some of them just need a platform to push them to the next level. And most of the time, based on how this world runs, it's money. It is money. So you find yourself working to be able to save and, 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 and put something aside so that you can reinvest in yourself to take you where you need to go or, or put the, the pieces of the puzzle together so that, you know, sometimes for a musician, it just might be a good copyright. You know what I'm saying? Not just mail it to yourself in the poor man's version, but to really send the money off to Albany to get it, you know, on the books. You know, and, and sometimes you don't never, you never know how difficult that is. So, you know, uh, for us to be able to continue to be creatives and do what we're doing, and it brings me all the way back to this pandemic, it's like I said, nothing short of a miracle that we're able to um, continue to, 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 to want to, if, if I didn't have music yes. to get me through this, mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of basket case I would be at the, by this time. We're, we're coming up on a year. Yeah. Now, are you living performing? like this? Are you performing? Are you, are you Zoom performing? How, what are you doing? Well, at first, you know, I, I, well, I'll tell you this. Um, uh, in January of last year, I ruptured my quadricep muscle and I was incapacitated. On January 3rd, I was out of commission no matter what. If there was a job to be had, I couldn't go to it. Uh, it took a month for me to get the surgery. And then by the time I was up and able to, on a crutch, like get to a gig and sit on a stool and sing, it was Valentine's weekend. It was here now. Um, and I did a Valentine's weekend. Then a week passed uh, by and I said, well, let me go and try to see if I could do, there was another gig that I had that was what I call one of my locals in New York at the Red Rooster with Nate Lucas. And um, so I said, let me go and see if I can perform there. Uh, they don't have a stage. The, 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 the configuration is on the floor and that makes it difficult because people are constantly passing by. The, right. the patrons are passing by, the waiters are passing by. My leg is in a, in a cast, not a cast, but a, a brace that went from my thigh all the way down to my ankle. So it had to stay straight. Oh, Allison, that's, so I, that's terrible. So, well, it was what it was. What it, was. it could have been a lot worse. But any, at any rate, so I wanted to make sure that I could sit on a stool and not have my leg in the aisle and, and you know, cause damage to me or anyone else. So my thing there was uh, the first two Sundays of every month, that's where I would be. It just so happens that March 1st came on a Sunday. I said, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start. It's a new month and I'm healed and I'm going to work. And then we're just getting little mumblings about this social distancing they were calling it. Yes. 
Yeah. Just a little bit. So I did the first and I did the following week, the eighth. On the 13th, they shut down the city of New York. And then two or three days later, they shut down the country. That was so, Brittany's birthday weekend. Brittany's birthday so, weekend was the 13th. She was supposed to be at a, her and John was supposed to go to a Broadway play. She was so mm -hmm. disappointed. And but everybody shut down. She was saying, Ma, I really, I really want to go over the weekend. I said, I, I don't know. We're hearing about it. Completely <laughs> shut down. And shut from down. that moment, there was just a there was there was March, April, May. I don't think I started doing anything maybe till June in terms of something that was a financial situation. Uh, I was lucky that um, Valerie Simpson, bless her heart, uh, thought that we really needed to have the Sugar Bar open mic Thursday. We needed to have that because the singers needed a place to be and the patrons needed a place to come yes. and experience once again, the medicine that is music. So we started doing it on Facebook Live and that, and, and, and she continued to pay us as hosts. Oh. Nothing. Which was the what, which is a wonderful thing, you know. So it became something to, to look forward to in terms of just having a little, you know, having some money. Right. Um, and so, like you said, uh, different things started to come, but they were all virtual. They were all in the box. Mm -hmm. um, I had one, the first live thing I did, and I think my March till August, um, I did something with. Uh, I did something in the box with the Queens Public Library, and then I did something live with Jazzmobile. Every year we do this thing called Great Jazz on the Great Hill, and it's one of their biggest um, performances that they do during the year in Central Park. And um, I've been hosting it for a long, long time, and being the mistress of ceremonies and performing all of that. And it was shut down, because, but some kind of way. The city of New York got together with the Central Park Conservancy and Jazzmobile and allowed us to go into the park under a tree. We couldn't set up the big stage, or anything like that, but we did the jazz on the great jazz on the Great Hill live in Central Park. And for me and many of the other musicians, well, I had done some things with other musicians that just weren't, you know, that, that were private events. But these guys uh, were had not worked with each other since March, yep. they hadn't seen another bandmate and played a she sheet of music mm -hmm. for that long. You know, for it, five or six months. Yep. So it was it was just incredible to be able to do that. And then they virtually streamed it. We didn't have an audience. And you did not have, right. So, I mean, and we so, we need it. We need performances. I need to hear music. I need to, I mean, thank God for, for you know, the music we have around here and Phil performing every once, you know, practicing and everything. But everybody needs it. We need we need music to come back. What 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 a lot of people you know and I mean in being uh, realistic and understanding that obviously our our, our first first uh, front line people are our doctors and nurses and 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 and, and caretakers and of course the the first responders like uh, you know fire department police and all those other. Uh, people are our frontline people and 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 and, uh, and we understand that but music is essential too yes. we are essential workers we just have no place to work and then one thing about our essential work is that it draws people and we can't draw people together because we're trying to keep apart until we can contain this thing and be safe so you can't have restaurants you can't have hotel uh uh, 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 um, performances in the in the, in the uh, you know in the lounges, and you can't have concerts and theater and and Broadway and off Broadway and all kinds of things that we can't have. But it's so necessary and so needed. And right now, people are yearning for it. They not are. just not just in the thing that will bring us together and have that normalcy of being able to be next to each other or even a few seats away from each other. But we need the the soothing thing that notes bring that yeah. the sound of a voice brings, that the sound of an instrument brings, that the sound of reciting uh, a, a poem or a, or a, or a, or a script or, or, you know, a dialogue or a monologue, you need it. Yeah, we do. To tell the story. We, we are essential workers and we, we've been hit the hardest. So and I tell you working on anything while you are in this pandemic in your beautiful new home, are you working on music? What? Tell me what Allison Williams is working on right now. If I'm looking for secret. Well, you know, after we after I came out of the place of oh, <laughs> I realized you know you have to utilize this time 
to get ready so you don't have to get ready. Be ready. When the gates open up, you want to be, you ever look at the footage of the uh, the New York Marathon and the first few people that across the front? You want to be in the front yes, or at least close to the front, not in the middle or the back of the pack. And um, I think when this opens up, <clears throat> we'll be able to uh, do so much more. And I think there'll be so many more opportunities for people who might not have given, gotten a chance to shine as brightly because uh, there's gonna be so much more demand because the need is there. and the desire to have it is so big. Um, and and uh, I've just been, like I said, I've been so happy to be able to continue to have music. I was inducted into the Soul Music Hall of Fame last, last fall and I'm thankful for that. Um, I was able to go into the studios on, on several different projects with people like uh, Chris Big Dog Davis, and uh, he's a producer, and Najee. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to um, release new music into the world. I have a project that should have been released last August called Summer Nights in Harlem. It is a jazz project. It allows me to finally get back to my root. Um, like I said, I feel I feel like the Forrest Gump of what I do. I've been everywhere in all genres and so many different levels of art, the theater and arts and performance. But I've made my bones as an R&B singer mm -hmm. um, with the stuff that I released on Def Jam and, and Just Call My Name and all of that. Um, but I come from a jazz background and that is my love. So I finally got a chance to put together um, a project that is jazz driven. Um, and the first two songs, Summer Nights in Harlem and The Romance of You, we did a soft launch for the single, just to get a buzz going, just to test the waters. And to be able to do that in the middle of a pandemic is almost, what are you trying to do? But I was determined. Did you uh, launch it on, and you said you launched, you did a soft launch. What was that? We put, it's, on, it's on all platforms. You can okay. find it on Spotify, Amazon, Apple Music, blah, 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 wherever people consume music these days. Okay, you can so find it. They need to find that. They need to know it, that. Yeah. Yes. And it's called Summer Nights in Harlem. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think on some places you're able to even find the romance of you. Um, I, we didn't mean to release both, but some kind of way through the technology, they got linked together. But anyway, we, we want you to have the music and please go out and stream it and purchase it because we, we need that support. Um, don't just, you know, download it and copy it and share it to everybody. Just please support the music. Um, at $1.29.99, you can't go wrong. The price is right. Right after, um, right after this, I will certainly be downloading it. Everybody out there listening needs to, you need to do the same thing. Everybody right now. Please. Please. Hold up your phone. Let's see. Let me see if you're doing it. Do it now. Summer nights in Harlem, but um, it's a great it's a great song written by Maurice Lynch. I have a wonderful, uh, incredible A team list of musicians. Um, I have to sh shout out uh, Christian McBride, Christian Sands, Ulysses Owens, Ron Blake, Kirk Whalem, Ray Chu, uh, King Solomon Hicks. Greg Sneed, uh, Ty Stevens, and Don Tallman on vocals, and they put just they just put just the right touch of everything I needed on this project, which is a nod to the music I grew up on. Now, you how know? did you gather everybody else? And was this, this was pre-pandemic. How did you get together and re I love it. You see that? I just love them on the phone. Technology. I, 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 when I listened to the music as it was brought to me by Maurice, I said, this is this kind of music I've been looking for. I've been trying to do a project that speaks into what I, want to do. I want to do music like uh, Ella. I want to do music like uh, uh, like Dinah Washington. I want to do something like Carmen McRae or Nancy Wilson with a big orchestrated feel to it. And I just got to figure it out. And I want to put new music into the world, not just cover the great American songbook, but some somebody wrote Misty. Somebody wrote Funny Valentine and they put it into the world and then they became standards. That's and right. then and, and now X amount of a hundred years later, everybody wants to sing Misty or Funny Valentine or, you know, and, and so I wanted to put music into the world that one day somebody would say, oh, what's the song by Alice Williams, Summer Nights at Home? We got to put that in the show. We got to put that in our repertoire. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to create new school standards. And I thought that this music felt like that. And when I thought that it felt like that, I said, it deserves to be played and reproduced by the best. And I called the best. And I said, can you guys come help me? And they were like, whatever you need, Allison, tell us where and when. And that's it's just a blessing. It's just a blessing that it all came through, that all those people said yes. 
the power of community. I love it. And staying in touch, staying in touch with people around you, right? Not letting staying go. in touch, forging relationships and, and, and being there. And, you know, I think it's my ability and desire to always be in service, to always be ready to say yes, to always be able to say, sure, I can come. You don't have any money. It's all right. I'll come anyway. Those kinds of things. That's what I think lays the foundation for when you need and may not have. Yeah. Uh, we were lucky not to have to, you know, call in uh, straight out um, uh, favors. We were able to give everyone something, you know, respectable for their time. And that's a blessing as well. But to know that they would have come for a shiny new penny. And they made me know that. I love that about you, Allison. And you've always been there every time I've called you and, you know, and I hope I'm reciprocal in, in, in when you need me for anything. Always, always. And when I have, when I come to, when I come to, to the uh, conferences, you always treat me just like a queen. You know what I mean? You make it, you know, whether we're in a ballroom or, or we're in an auditorium or wherever we are, you always make it so that I know that my performance means something and it means something to your participants. Yes. Because and Aoi is my hoo hoo. And you are out. Hoo -hoo. That's, and that's, that's real. You keep it real and you make your audience feel good and loved and warm. And, uh, you know, just call my name is, is what it's all about. I mean, and everybody looks and much more, much more. But we look to you for that always. You bring us together. Oh, I've come several times and tried to sing other things and it was accepted well and received well, but I couldn't leave the room until Just Call My Name was performed. Mm -mm, you could not leave the room. And then your performances with, with CSN songs have been just fabulous. Absolutely. Phil asked about you the other day too. We I love Phil. I love performing with those gentlemen. They're wonderful and they always embrace me. And uh, we always look forward to trying to do things and we still have to do, do other things outside of that. We just haven't gotten there yet, but I always, I've never forgotten and I never forget that that's another avenue that I want to travel down with those guys. It is. And he, he always, he, 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 you're always on the forefront. You're always, we were talking about you driving home the other night. A song came on. I was like, mm, she sounds like Allison. I swear. Uh -huh. I said, wow. Allison's got that voice, that beautiful, heavy, sexy voice. And you, I'm sexy. <laughs> You always have. You always have. Oh, so is there anything you want to share with us? I mean, you shared your, your music. Anything you want to share that we can, um, you know, I, I have a question for you. What do you what do you say to anyone, not just inventors, who are striving towards something and they're just ready to give up? They're ready to drop it all and say, you know what? I'm over it. I'm done with it. What would you say to those um, I'm going to say inventors because so many people are inventors and entrepreneurs out there listening and watching you. What advice? You, I think that that voice um, pops up in all of our heads. And I say, um, you'll hear it, um, but don't listen to it. Don't give up. Um, you can't you can't win it if you're not in it. That's what you say. You got to be in it to win it. And I know it might seem sometime like it's just not going to happen or it's taking so long or why is it seems like everyone is passing me by or why did that person get to the point that I'm trying to get to and they seem like they didn't work as hard or they're not even as good at it or whatever. Um, you got to listen for that other small quiet voice that is reminiscent of the voice that got you started in the first place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if you need to cry, then cry. That's okay. If you need to get be, if you need to curl up and don't get out the bed for, for a day, then do that. But just for a day, because everybody else is still getting up. You know, but you have to you have to love on yourself enough to let you have that moment, but don't give up. I think about it every day. Mm -hmm. There's not a day in a week that goes by, you know, or at least once a week where I'm like, oh, I'm just done. I'm tired. I can't, especially in this. And it's it's gonna this the, the it's gonna it's going to take a little bit more to continue to, to thrive because we have been put into a physical and mental space that is abnormal from what we know. You don't stay away from people and sequestered and, and, and uh, to yourself for a year. No, that's not, that's you not. You don't not hug people for a year. Yeah, you sure. don't not go out and hear music for a year. You don't not go out and eat in a, for a restaurant for a year. Now, I'm sure we've done a little bit of all of that, but the amount that we've done feels like nothing compared to how much we used to do it. It was our everyday 
thick. We, was, we went out. We saw each other. We gathered at holidays. We 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 we, we mourned our, our our lost ones and buried them. We did we did these things. Now we don't. So it is going to affect us physically, whether we got sick or not, Anymore. and it's going to affect us mentally. Yeah. And it's going to be that post-traumatic syndrome because that's what it is. We are going to be, after a trauma, we're going to have a syndrome, and that's going to that's going to weigh on you even heavier in the I can't, I'm tired, I don't feel like it, I'm over it department. But you got to find that extra strength. It's right. in there. Lift it and up. Then, and then and 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 try even harder and yeah. push even harder. And, and now you got something else that's 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 weighing on you that wouldn't have ordinarily been there. So you got to fight through that too. Yeah, you do. But you also have to have um, mentorship, friendships, real sincere. You need to be able to pick up the phone and call you do. who loves you and you love and love on each other and keep to keep that going. I love and your faith and your faith, yeah. your, your spiritual faith has not your religion, not your doctrine, your physical, your, 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 your absolute faith and spirituality, that kind thing you're, you're in, inside of you. You know what I do sometimes? People will call me and leave me a message and it'll be really inspiring. I archive that message. I put it in the part of the phone with archive because sometimes I have to go back and listen to it. <laughs> I have to hear somebody tell me something good. You know what, Allison? I, I do the same thing and I have to tell you, I kept your, you sang happy birthday to me on my birthday and I still have that in my phone and it's it such a schmoo it will never go away i will always have your happy your your birthday my happy birthday love it's your happy it's your happy birthday to me from allison williams i, I love, love singing happy birthday to people because i feel that i can give no better gift than the gift that god gave me and it was God gave me a gift and I give it to somebody else. It's the best ever. I can't go in the store and buy that. I can't give you an envelope full of money that's going to be worth more than that. That is what I do. So when, if someone thinks enough of what I've got to give, I give it to them. And I call them and sing happy birthday. And people are always like, oh my God, can you call me back so I can record it? Can you call me back? I won't pick up. Or oh my God, I'm so, I'm so glad I did And I'm going, listen, just live in this moment, please. But oh, you can I'm so, I'm, I, I was sorry I missed your call, but I was so happy I didn't pick up. I was so happy I didn't pick up the phone. But it's so personal. You know, when you sing to someone, yes. you just sing to them. We sing to people we love. We sing to our beloveds. We sing to our babies. We sing to, our, you know, we, we sing to, not for, not at. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not, I'm not trying to impress you. I'm not trying to give you what I can do. And, and, and I'm not trying to give you, I'm singing to you. It's, it's, it's personal and it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's very intimate. And, I, and I'm glad that you have that and you like that. And that, that made, made you happy. It makes me very happy. So I want to ask you something. Um, okay. This is a question I, we ask at the end of our show and I don't want this to ever end, but we have to wrap at some point, right? So if you were, to write a movie, and you probably have, and you were not playing you in the movie. First of all, there's three questions. What would the movie be called? What would the name of the movie be called? Number one. Who would play you as number two? So while you're thinking, I'll let you think on uh, one and two. Okay. And what's the third one? Well, you have to answer two and then then I'll Okay. What's the name? What would the name of the movie be? Uh-huh. There's so That's much hard. It's so much. The the most creative people have the hardest time. I would say, I would say the thing that I say all the time, which is uh Little Black Girl from Harlem, the Allison Williams story. Love it. Or we could even take Little on and call it Black Girl from Harlem, Allison Williams story, something like that. You better trademark that girl, trademark uh, that. <laughs> I guess. And um, who would play me? Who would play you? If you couldn't play yourself, I mean, nobody else could be you but you, but who would play you? No idea who would play me. Uh, I never thought about it. I never thought who would play me. Who, who as an actress would, yeah, would be? An actress. And I'm trying to think too, like who would play Allison Williams? Who has that 
Allison Williams um, gutsiness personality. Now, there are a lot of female actresses that I think are wonderful that could play me, but who do I see play me? I couldn't answer. You know, I think of, um, I think of uh, Angela Bassett. I think of Viola Davis. I think of, you know, brown skin, strong women, you know, that could do, but I, I, and they don't even have to sing, you know what I'm saying? Cause we could put, fix that. Um, but Viola uh, Davis, Viola well, Davis, Viola Davis. Yeah, cause they have to be a, of a certain uh, um, physical thing, you know, as well. It's that strength. I'm yeah. That strength. Yeah. That strength and that power. And I see Viola Davis with having that kind of strength in, in how she, she performs. And personally, I've seen her on interviews and, and uh -huh. very personal, yeah. and powerful and caring. And if she's not available, I guess I just have to do it myself. Oh, darn. <laughs> well, uh, and the last question is, if you were on a deserted island by yourself, well, you were alone and you could take only one person or being with you, no relatives, no, um, no friends, who would that be? Well, why would I take anybody that wasn't a relative or a friend? I don't know. Okay, if I, could, I couldn't take anybody with me that I knew? It could be, no. Well, no, no, let's change it. You can't, okay. take, you can't take a spouse or a relative. Okay. Uh, if I couldn't take a spouse or a relative, I would probably take my best friend, Terry, because we get along so well that and we could what be- What does Terry do for you? Terry? is non-judgmental and a voice of reason and she's uh, she's a Taurus like me we we can do it and it's we don't need a babysitter do you know what I'm saying she's not scared she's bold she's bolder than me and so you know if we have to fight off a wild boar she's not gonna run up a tree we're gonna fight the boar you know what I'm saying or whatever the case may be so I think you know she like I, I've noticed that as I've matured you know, when I travel, especially when I travel for work, I'm very protective of my space. So you always kind of like to take a girlfriend, you know, when you're running around across the country and doing things, but everybody can't live in my room with me. Yes. But I didn't used to be like that, you know, but now I'm very protective of that. So I can be more solitary. I don't mind having a friend come, but we might have to get the rooms adjoining or something like that. Because especially when I go for work, Mm -hmm. There's a certain thing, a certain way I need to maneuver and I don't need anybody in that space unless they're on the payroll. If you're makeup or hair or wardrobe or personal assistant, then fine. Cause you're, you gotta be there. But if you ain't gotta be there, I can't have it. Cause I don't, I don't really need to hear any of your voices. I don't need to see another bit. And it's not that I don't love you. It's just, that's how I feel. With Terry, she can be there and she's almost invisible. Like I don't, my, she can be in my space when I, when I don't really want anybody else in the space. So I would have to take her. That's a, that's a really good friend. That's a close friend. And, and there are very few people. I and have. I'm the same for her. She, I can be in her world and she's not like, oh, yeah, this yeah. Is really nice, but I'd be glad when she get ready to go home. <laughs> you know? We're, we're really, we're, we're just, we're just fine. And it's good. And, you know, we think alike and, and, um, and without that thing that says, like, she's not a yes person to me. Mm -hmm. She doesn't yes up on me because I'm Allison or because I'm Allison Williams sometimes. She's like real clear, like, are you serious? Right. And I'm like that with her too. I'm like, no, I'm not even, as a matter of fact, you have to lower your voice because I'm not even trying to hear you talk that loud. And then she calms it down. You know, we're like that with you. We're very honest with each other. One person like that in your life, you really do. Or two, maybe there's two. I yeah, maybe there's two. I'm, I'm think I'm fortunate to have two, but she's the one I'm taking to the island. So love it. Well, Allison, this has been fantastic. Uh, please again share your album. Your um, if you have a website, tell people where they can go to buy your. Um, I'm going to tell you everything, and please. and just because I left two things out, but I'm going to get to one of them. Uh, this one, I want to say that I'm excited to say that last year, and I'm still celebrating it because. <sighs> It, it, because people are, are requesting it. Um, I just got a call from a friend of mine who has a, 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 a radio show on WMEL. It's, a, it's an internet radio show and it's called Front Stage Radio Show. 
Okay. And she's going to start her show. Her name is Cynthia Tyre. And she's going to start the show on February 25th. And I'm going to be one of her guests, but I'm also going to be a judge. She's put together a, a virtual talent show contest. Mm -hmm. And they are celebrating the 30th year anniversary of Just Call My Name. Yay! My hit single celebrated its 30th year anniversary last year but this year we're doing the contest and the winner will win an opportunity to um collaborate with me some kind of way musically we don't know how but something you know what do you, what do you call it so something's going to happen um i want to just tell you so your folks know um how to get involved with it if you don't mind oh, please do um, really really quickly i just want to give you this information because i'm still celebrating my 30th year anniversary too because i missed the 15th the 20th then 25th i don't know where the heck i was <laughs> but by the time i looked up it was 30 years since 1989 90 when we put out that record awesome. and it's just amazing to know 30 three zero <laughs> 30 years uh, it's amazing to me. I'm going to tell you um, there is a place that you'll go um, and, uh, and, 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 and register. Um, and it's called blackguideapp.com. Black? Blackguideapp.com. .com. Okay. Black. B L A C K B L A C K G U I D E A P P dot com. And you'll download the app and go to Front Stage Radio Show Contest page, and then you'll register. But this is yeah. So and, and it's going to be it's going to happen over a ten week period. It's going to be really great, and um, I'm going to love getting a chance to see uh, new artists and, and and young artists coming up. You know, trying to trying to go for the gold. Um, we're going to have a lot of good other judges along with me. Uh, some of them celebrities, some of them from other walks of uh, other areas of music business and the arts in general. So that's front stage radio stage spelled with two A's and uh, that's gonna start. And um, I'll tell you more about it when we're, when we're not talking because we need to have you on Lisa. Oh, how does that song go, Allison? For those, how does Just that Just my name and I'll come running. You always get me to sing, you just think you're slick. <laughs> you think you're slick, you think you're slick. Ooh, let me tell you something about Lisa, she's a slick, <laughs> that one can get me to do anything. So, so I, like I said, celebrating 30 years of, of, uh, of Just Call My Name, but um, I want people to please continue and thank you for uh, uh, cel ce uh, celebrating, for um, supporting me on my radio show, uh, Love Notes with Allison Williams in the Chill Zone, which is WHCR, Harlem Community Radio, we broadcast live when we can, <laughs> when, we, when we could from City College. It is the voice of Harlem, 90.3 FM, WHCR. And I air on Tuesdays from eight to 10, uh, Love Notes with Allison Williams. I've celebrated now five years in radio broadcast, which is a big deal because I'm a singer. <laughs> And I never thought I'd get to live my dream of communication. So thank you, WHCR, for that. Um, my uh, Facebook is Allison Williams Music. My Instagram is Allison Williams Music. And my Twitter is Allison Williams. My website um, is it's the longest journey in the world to build this website, but it is AllisonWilliamsMusic.com. And I hope by the time my birthday comes, I'll have it up and running. It's a process. What's the date, Allison? What's your birthday? My birthday is May 11th. Okay, May 11th. But I'm, I'm, I use that as a sarcastic date to, uh, to have the, the website up. I hope it'll be up shortly. Be. Uh, but, you know, things, things slowed down in the pandemic. So everything kind of took a, a little, you know, it started going in slow motion, but we're putting the pieces together. Uh, but that's how you can find me on all those, on all those platforms. And, and I hope that um, we'll be able to build and gather even more steam and more, more good followers and people and likes and Definitely. all the things that you need to keep it going. Um, I hope to do more things with AOE very soon. It's and um, it's happening. It's happening. And we're going to make, we're going to make sure people like share, purchase the app, download the music and we're download gonna... uh, summer nights in Harlem by Allison Williams, please. I appreciate you. And I thank you in advance. Yes, Allison, you are such a pleasure. It's so wonderful to have you on the inventors podcast and be face to face, kind of almost tugging in our homes. And um, hopefully we can get to see each other soon. I hope so. It's been such a pleasure, a wonderful having you, sweetheart. 
and uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. God thank you so much. Congratulations, sweetie. I love you. Hearts. So that was absolutely amazing. Allison Williams is the bomb diggity. And uh, listen, I've known her for many, many years and she has not changed once. People talk about how when you get rich and famous and all that, some people change. Allison Williams has never changed, not for one moment. Love, respect her. Uh, and listen, check her out yourself. She's got a website. It's allisonwilliamsmusic.com. That's allisonwilliamsmusic.com. Uh, she was a joy. And um, I'm going to keep on having wonderful people like Allison. Not as great as Allison. So guys, if you want to keep on listening to me, I'm on every single podcast platform. You know, you know them. Spotify, Google Play, all those things. Definitely follow me on social media. I'm on every single social media platform. So check me out. Facebook, Instagram, you got it everywhere. So until I see or hear from you the next time, keep on lifting each other up two hands at a time. And sometimes you got to use that foot. 